For the Empire. <laughs> Luke, I am your father. See how we're doing duct-wise up here. Okay, those two ducts alone allow for 1,000 cubic feet of air each. The attic's pretty warm today. Hey guys, Will Yarbrough here. Today we're going to a house in Edmond to look at an HVAC system. Our technician was over there earlier today and found a restriction in the coil and their unit was froze up. So we are going to give them a quote on replacing that system. Whenever someone's looking at this and they're going, well, I just have a restriction in my coil. Do I really need to replace the whole system? And there are times where you can just replace the coil. But in this instance, in particular, the unit was from 2008. And so all the warranties had already expired and the customer specifically requested a quote to replace. The customer's really wanting to see what a replacement would look like. And two, to go with a more efficient system so that they can save money on their utility bills. We're always gonna give people that option. So here we are at the condenser. It's an outdoor condenser. This is where uh, all of the refrigerant comes and the, the, the compressor condenses that refrigerant down. It, releases the heat here to send the refrigerant back to the coil so that it can grab more heat inside the house and bring it out here and provide cooling for the house. So originally our technician found a restriction in the coil, which is gonna be inside. So it's not out here, but what's important is to see the tonnage on the air conditioner. So that way we know what size the system is and that way we're not shortchanging any cooling capacity on the inside when we go with a replacement. So I'm gonna check the tonnage, check the wire size, check the refrigerant lines to make sure there's no kinks and uh, we'll go from there and move on to the coil. So right now I'm looking at the, the model number and so it's a, a 60,000 BTU. So that tells me it's a five ton, so that's great. So next I'm gonna check the wire size, which is on that disconnect over there. But you always wanna be sure your wire size is the, is the right size because you've got a minimum ampacity and a maximum. You don't ever want the wire to, to over amp. And so this is a 510 unit. It's been operating since 2008. I don't anticipate there being any issue, but I always double check. So on this, on this disconnect, the wire size is number eight, which will carry 40 amps, which is for a five ton is perfect. So I'm just getting pictures to verify. The whip that connects the condenser to this, and then the wires coming out of the wall that connect it to the breaker box. So we are great. I'm gonna mark my wire size here. Check out the refrigerant lines. So something on these refrigerant lines is that you can see this Armaflex, this refrigerant insulator right here is just, it's pretty thin and it looks pretty worn. So it's pretty old. It's probably here from 2008. It's never been re-insulated. So you can see where the original insulation came, right? So we're definitely gonna wanna go back and uh, re-insulate this. But with it being a five ton, I can reuse the refrigerant lines. There's no leak in the line there. And so that's something that we can look at doing. An opportunity to save the customer a little bit of money, especially if the lines are in good shape and they just need to be re-insulated. Re so anytime we're reusing refrigerant lines, it's worth saying that before we install the new equipment, we always do a nitrogen pressure test of the existing lines to ensure that there are no leaks. Um, and if there is a leak, we can catch it on the front end and then have a conversation with the customer that we do indeed need to go and replace those lines. Um, but oftentimes if the lines are in good shape and it matches the tonnage of the system, I try to reuse them if at all possible um, so that we can one, save the customer a little bit of money and um, two, we don't have refrigerant lines running up the side of the house as well. So now we're back in the house. We're taking a look at the thermostat. So this is the, uh, the brain of the entire indoor air system. And so whatever the temperature is at this location, the system assumes that every room in the house is like this, unless there's independent sensors. So it's really important to kind of have your thermostat located somewhere probably close to a return vent, um, which this one is, that's really good news. And so um, right now it's set at 72 and it is 72. So uh, our technician did a good job on kind of getting them up and running so that they're not constantly dealing with a, a no cool situation. Um, but the, the fact still remains the same is that we still need to get a quote on, on um, uh, replacing this system or doing, doing some sort of repair because that's, this is just kind of getting them along until it's an issue again. So what I'm doing now is I'm checking the square inches on this return vent because it, the unit is a five ton. So that means it needs 2000 cubic feet of air to come through uh, to the system. So I wanna be sure that we're getting that amount of air up in there. And the way you calculate this is you get the square inches. I'm assuming this is probably a 14 by 30. So, yep, 30 by, yep, 14. Okay, so you take 14 times 30. Let me get my calculator out here because I need to be able to do a calculator. So 14 times 30 
is 420. Now, the filter is not right here, so my static pressure multiplier is gonna be three. So you take 420 square inches times three, and that tells me that 1,260 cubic feet of air can pass through this opening. So that's really good, especially for a five ton. And I know they have another one in the living room. Anytime you're sizing the system up for the house, um, the math involved with that is really, you're looking at um, the square footage of the house and the size of the system. No uh, larger math than just division and multiplication. So you double. 1260 and you get your over 2000 so the unit is being able to breathe well so that's super important for the longevity of a system because when you have airflow restrictions your uh, blower inside your furnace has to work really hard it'd be like going for a run and try to breathe through a straw i know exactly what that feels like i am struggling with some sinus issues right now and so uh you know airflow restrictions are not good so you always want to be sure your system is bringing in enough air to condition that air and be able to expel that air to all the rooms and and the rooms in the house so that's gonna be a really important issue to look at. So now I'm about to move in the attic to take a look at the furnace, the coil, and the ductwork. Something that's gonna be really important to look at is on these return air vents is that the ductwork attached to this vent right here can accommodate the amount of air that we need for a five ton. So even though we might have enough room, you know, by math at this return right here, that ductwork, you know, the diameter of that duct, only so much air can, can go through a certain diameter of duct making sure that that's breathing well as well, that we're not like restricted by the diameter there, but we're good here. So that's gonna be important to look at. Okay, so really a lot of times I run into um, ladders that are a lot more rickety than this one. This is a really good sturdy ladder and it's really wide, which is nice to be able to move equipment up and down. Sometimes ladders can be narrow and then you've got to come in and expand the ladder, the ladder opening to accommodate a furnace and coil. Oh, I almost forgot. <coughs> Excuse me, I gotta get my mask. <laughs> I was about to walk in there too. All right. One cannot simply forget one's mask. For the empire. <laughs> All right. All right. Oh, nice. Nice, nice, nice. So you can see there's no insulation above the garage. That's pretty typical. So this is really good. He's got a, uh, an elevator system. That's really nice. You can bring boxes and stuff up and down. It's nice for our technicians and our service or our install guys to be able to move equipment up and down. Okay, here is, here is the existing system. Okay, let's take a look at this. The coil is the right size, super important. So you can see the pan here has got water inside. So you see this pan is rusted out. So it's gonna be important to replace this. This float switch looks new. So that's gonna be super important as well. So that way it doesn't fill up and they have a water leak over here all on their wood and down on their sheetrock. So that's gonna be important as well. So let's take a look at the returns. Okay, so on this return duct right here, you can see it's a 16 inch. So this duct will accommodate 1,000 cubic feet of air. So we have a 16 inch over here. I bet we have a 16 inch right here. Got to get around this one. I'm almost positive it's a 16 inch, but I just want to verify. Just those two ducts alone allow for 1,000 cubic feet of air each. So a five ton system is going to be pulling 2,000. So that's great. Pretty rare to go into a house and then the, the return is sized just right. A lot of times the return air, which is the air coming back to the system, is undersized and the supply ducts are oversized. There's, there's almost too much. Um, you know, so... Uh, a lot of, in a lot of the instances that I go up in the attics, I'm adding a return, which is not the case here. So that's a, that's a, a really good, um, really good install and in whoever installed the system. We also have this duct right here coming from, looks like a bedroom back there. And I wanna see what size this is. Really at this point, the size almost doesn't matter just because we've got enough air already. See how we're doing duct wise up here, okay. Wow, so we got a big one coming out this side here. I'm gonna go back behind the unit up there. The attic's pretty warm today. It's so hot up here, my phone turns off its light to conserve its battery. So I know when my phone overheats, it's probably time to get out of the attic. You don't wanna get overheated. So that's why it's really important for our guys that are doing installs like this every day. They're up here for hours at a time. It's important to bring the hydrate, get enough water, and uh, take trips outside just to cool your body off. You don't wanna overheat. So right here too is the refrigerant lines. Those look pretty good too. That's not bad. Okay. Whew. 
Something that I want to go back and check is the unit has two ducts going on either side. I took a picture of one filter side, but it also needs to be filtered on the other side. So it's going to be really important to get that filter size and what's what's happening over there. Because especially if there's not a filter over there, there needs to be one. Because air is coming from two different directions. It's not coming into what's traditionally a return plenum, where it's just one box that feeds the entire unit. It's coming in from two different locations. I didn't grab a picture of the last filter um, that was up there on the, on the other side of the unit. So I'm going to grab that before I come back down and work up quotes. Nope, I am your father. <laughs> okay, so both of these, there is filters on both sides, and they're both 14 by 24s. That's good to know. All right, we can go back out. So, check the other side, it was indeed filtered. They're both 14 by 24 filters, which is great. And so, um, so for this system, it's being filtered from two different locations. So it's always really important to check that because anytime you have return air coming to the system, it's got to be filtered. Uh, so he's got just one inch pleated filters. And so we can uh, take a look at either going back with what he's got now or upgrading that filtration system. So that'll be an option that I present to the customer. So what I'm doing now is uh, I'm going to go put up my tools and I'm going to go inside and uh, build up a quote for the customer. We're going to talk about our options. And then after that, we'll debrief about how the job went, what our prospects are and go from there. Okay, all right, so we went over the options with the customer, went over about four variable speed options, two two-stage options, and a single-stage option. Um, I think everything went well. They just want a little bit of time to kind of talk about it tonight. I'm going to follow up tomorrow afternoon that was specifically requested by the customer, and we'll kind of see if I can answer any questions and get them set up. Anyways, a really successful day. As far as the system goes, it was really pretty clean. The attic was easy, the system was sized right, the ductwork was sized right. So this is about a, the best situation that you could hope for in a residential replacement system. So we'll give them a call tomorrow, see what they want to do and go from there. Talked with the customer the next day. Um, him and his wife actually were, were really busy and didn't have a chance to, to talk about it again. So they wanted to push that out just a little bit more. Um, so we're still following up, still talking uh, about their different options and kind of what they want to do. Um, the, uh, the weather in Oklahoma is getting a little bit cooler. Still in active communication with them to kind of see how, how we can help them and potentially save them a lot of money on their utility bills. Um, so it's about as simple as a replacement um, scenario that you could hope for. My name is Will Yarbrough with Yarbrough & Sons Heating, Cooling, and Plumbing. And you can reach us at 405-309-3470. Have a great one.